Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. So we are going to be live on YouTube and in the Discord this evening. And when we have a live show, what does that mean for our intro? We'll do it live. Okay. Our intro. We'll, no. we'll do it live! And you know the rest. We'll do it live. Okay. Our intro. We'll, no. we'll do it Alrighty, so here we go now. Had a little bit of an echo on there. But we should be ready to go now, and we're in Discord as well. So I'm going to do a lot this evening. I'm going to do portfolio reviews. I'm going to talk about yield max. I'm going to talk about um, growth stocks, growth ETFs. We're going to talk about everything. So welcome everybody that's uh, already commented so far. Yeah, it was a rough day for the market. Uh, welcome everyone. Oh, uh, did you send an updated portfolio dissector? I'll have to go look at it. Hopefully I can see with these glasses. By the way, so I wanted to show, you know, a testament to the legitimacy of the yield max dividends. I was hoping to show, you know, some of the attire that I bought with my yield max dividends, like, you know, a money hat, some glasses, and some jewelry and stuff like that, of course. So, <laughs> oh, and of course, not to forget the advanced financial forecasting equipment. So, the glasses were such a hit, I figured I would bring them back. Okay, <clears throat> let me do this now. Let me X out of this, and then we're in Discord over here. So here we go. Okay, so I'm live in the voice chat in the Discord for anyone that wants to hop on. Let me go ahead and make the announcement here. Do it live, right? So join in. Okay. So I've had a lot of commenters that ask me, you know, why I cherry picked uh, the top three uh, yield max funds. So um, I'll break down why I did that. Go over all of the funds, and uh, let me try to get my window to fit here. Okay. So let's look at Seeking Alpha first. So the last fund I was looking at. So I had the top three payers: Coney, NVDY, and MSTY up. But I also have all the yield max funds up so we might as well just do a comprehensive review of all the funds and yeah the market did fall hard today so let's um <clears throat> let's review this real quick and then we'll get to more fun stuff all right so <clears throat> year to date tesla is down 24%, OARK is down 4%, this is in total return, Coney is up 25%, SQY is down 1.61%, Apple is down 8%, NVDY is up 48%, NFLY is up 22.8%. The next batch of funds, uh, a welcome uh, music man, welcome. Okay, yeah, I'll do the portfolio reviews. So I'm gonna have two of them. I'll do I'll do dissectors updated one second because I promised someone else I would do theirs too. Okay, so AMDY, not AMDY, but um, AMZY is up 19%. GUI is up 50 or 0.50%. FBY 23% in total return. MSFO 11%. PP 6%. MRNY 6.4%. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised that Tesla stayed positive. I'm surprised they paid as much of a dividend as they did. Uh, minus 3% for Ulti, MRNY, 6.39%. Uh, let's see, I believe I have the dividends up here. Yeah, so we had, uh, so three of them paid over 100%. Um, Tesla, I'm shocked it was over 50%. OARK, I'm even shocked at. Um, FBY was over 60%, NFLY was 50 I thought this one would actually be a little higher. Um, oh, too big. Um, <clears throat> yeah, FBY, uh, Google is kind of low. Uh, let's see. AMDY, 65 Oh, someone asked me why I didn't cover AMDY more. Let me add this to the list over here. I'm just kind of brushing through all of them. So... AMDY to add this one to the list. And I have to say, I'm surprised how often I have to answer why these drop when they pay dividends. Everybody understands why these drop when they pay dividends, right? Because there's the concept of the ex-dividend date when the dividend comes out of 
the nav, basically. Okay, so you can see everything dropped here on the ex-dividend date. Let me refresh this page for today. Um, AMDY over one month is uh, yeah down 23%. Let me look at one day since Orion mentioned uh, one day here. Let's see here if I can get this thing to cooperate with me. Oh, see, Richard wasn't first today because he had uh, CJ Navaj was commenting four times while he was waiting for me for a while. I wonder if he left. And Dissector's commenting what, or copying what Richard King says, this greetings and salutations. So yeah, welcome everyone. Comment away. Um, okay, AMDY. Wait a second, I want to do the one day view over here. <laughs> we got the Ryan Dingler show on. So we rescheduled. We're going to actually have them on our podcast tomorrow. And um, okay, so AMDY is 14% um, down in five days. Wow, in five days. That's, that's really something. I'm not sure why the one day view doesn't want to come up for me. Maybe it's the glasses. Or maybe it didn't refresh yet. Anyway, what I want to do here for these, I want to add the underlying to these. So, um, AMD. Oh, he says, I'm holding nothing back. R-rated Ryan showing up and out. Good, and we're going to be live too. So, uh, oh, Ryan hates your portfolio dissector? Wonder do I have to look at it? I mean, you don't have any. Do you have any? You sold out of your yield max, right? I think you had some before, but you sold out of it. Okay, AMD. We want to look up uh, NVIDIA. I had someone ask me today why I keep harping on how the how the underline spelled like underline like you underline a word why they, why I keep harping on how the underline outperforms dividends so I kind of chuckled at that one. Um, <clears throat> okay, so Nvidia. Let's see, Coinbase. Oh, Coinbase. Let me add this one too. This is going somewhere, folks. Trust me. Okay, so the underlying not. Underline. Uh, let's see. Over. Well, Nvidia is down this week, but year to date, seventy-three percent. Coinbase forty-four percent up, and AMD's up twelve point five percent in total return. The AMD Y one that someone asked me about is um, underperforming as well. Oh, Hog Farmer says Ryan hates all things in life. <laughs> uh oh. I might have to break out the popcorn again. My last two chats have been lit, I have to say. Let's see. Um, okay, he says, I don't hate it. It's just too much and risky, but it's a risk portfolio. It's mostly growth. The last time I looked at it, it was a lot of um, stocks that Seeking Alpha talks about. Um, I actually liked it a lot as a, in terms of being a growth portfolio. Okay. Again, anyone that wants to hop into the voice chat over here, I think the person that I was going to review their portfolio, they're either working late. The first one I was going to do, they're either working late or something. This person, I did his portfolio last time I went live on here. Uh, let's see. Let me jump to portfolio. I'm going to kind of jump around. It's going to be free form. Oh, I see it. I see it in here. Let's see. Um... Oh, Crazy Wolf was the first one. So I reviewed this guy's last time, this uh, Marsh 1022. Really good one. Uh, if you all haven't checked that one out, he's got it all posted there. <laughs> I don't need subscriber, huh? But, so, I don't understand. All right, you guys are going to bait me into this. I don't understand if you don't need subscribers, then why do you, like, literally put it in the intro to your videos, asking people to subscribe to you? Just my thought. Tactical. <laughs> you guys are funny. I'm not going to read everything, but going to make me break out the popcorn. Okay, let's see what Crazy Wolf has to say here. Hello, I heard of YMAX, or YieldMax, and started getting into shock just the beginning of this year. My main purpose is to build good dividends to live off. Currently 30 years old, trying to see if I can retire at 40 and do part-time for then. I've been putting 3000 every month and will increase it when I get pay increase on my job till age 40. I'm looking for a strong portfolio, hopefully at least giving an average of 40% dividend. Well, good luck with that. Is Crazy Wolf a dog? We're going to find out. We'll find out if he's as much of a dog as Coach, right? 
Oh, thanks, Hog Farmer. Um, I, I haven't actually been keeping track of that, but I usually don't solicit that. But yeah, you know, like the video if you haven't. Okay, so let's see what this person has here. 58,499. Uh, let's see. Oh, they've got Dogecoin. Well, that's that's okay. It's slightly down. Um, NDAQ. Let's see here. <laughs> my phone screen doesn't recognize me with my glasses. Gotta type in my frickin' passcode. Okay, um... NDAQ. I thought that was NASDAQ. Okay, that's actually the NASDAQ stock. Year-to-date, it's up 7.31%. Uh, SQY. He's got SQY, MRNY. PSEC, I've seen this one before. Yeah, Prospect Capital Corporation. Uh, it's down 10% year-to-date over the past year. Down 20%. Uh, you'll have to tell me, I was hoping you'd be on, but you'll have to tell me your rationale for this one because I'm not seeing a compelling reason for this one. Coney, PBR.A. Oh, PBR, not like the beer. Like PBR beer. Oh, Petro... Petroleo Brasileiro. Petrobras. I've looked at this one before, actually. ABR. So, I would need more context uh, for Crazy Wolf. I'd need to know, like, what percentage of your net worth this is, roughly. You know, if you don't want to answer that, I mean, just... I, I would need, like, a rough estimate. Because if this is everything, uh, and you're in... It doesn't show your holdings. It shows you've got $834 of buying power right now. Um... Robinhood Gold, uh, and it shows, oh, here's your shares here, but it's not showing like the, I mean, I could do this, but I'm not going to do that during the video. Do I think Coinbase is a clown stock? Well, I think Coinbase definitely outperformed Kony, but a lot of it has to do with it being uh, tied to crypto, you know, because it's a crypto broker, right? It's a crypto exchange. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the run-up in Bitcoin because of the Bitcoin halving, which, by the way, is taking place this month. Uh, okay, let's see. ABR, Clip. I think Clip is uh, is garbage, honestly. Um, I have some of it. I think I let the audience talk me into getting into it a year ago. I mean, I won't say garbage. I'm not. I'm not happy with it. I'll put it that way. Um, it hasn't performed well, and China's kind of in the in the tank right now. Anything Chinese? Ulti. Okay, I see a lot of red. Tesla. Oh. Wow, Tesla's 18% of your portfolio. So I don't have a lot of context here. I don't know what percentage of your net worth this portfolio is. Uh, if this was a lot of it, I would say it's bad news having 18% in Tesla of this portfolio. It depends on how soon you need the money and what percentage, like I say, of your whole portfolio it is. Misty, I hope this is... Oh, I'm sorry, I, I read this wrong. My apologies. Um, it means you're down 18%. It's not 18% of your overall... How many shares? You've got 305 shares. See, I would need more, like I would need you to submit, you don't have to show me your cost basis or whatever if you if you don't want to show that, but you would need to submit to me like the dollar amount in each stock. Because I, I could do it. I mean, it's you're down $1,000, but I would have to spend the live show doing this. So in terms of like a grade, I would say TBD or uh, not applicable right now. I'd need more info. Because from what I see, you're down in most of these. The only ones you're up in is MRNY, NASDAQ, and SQY. And I only see one individual. Actually, no. You've got two individual stocks. The rest, let's see, you've got one yield max, two, three. Oh, no, this is a stock, too. Okay, so is that one. You've got, like, let's see, six yield max funds. And then you've got CLIP. So I would say I need more context. Oh, yeah, and there in the comments you said you work 16 hours. You'd see if you could join. Okay, I even made it later. All right, dissectors. Here's dissectors. Before, um, before I get into this one, just have to you know give a little bit of a reminder to the audience here. Uh, hold on, just a second. Let me scroll up here. This never gets old. Just so the audience gets a good intro here. Dissector, you are an idiot. <laughs> so this is the person's portfolio that we're going to be reviewing now, and that never gets old can't resist. Okay. Uh, let's see now. 
portfolio reviews. Let me go to the general real quick. Wow, no one's joining the live. Oh well. Uh, okay. Here we go. All right, let's look at it. Let's find out. Let's find out if Dissector is a dog, right? Uh, SMCI, how's that one doing? Oh, current price over a thousand still. I like this one. Uh, high tie. He's got a lot of high tie. He's up 24%. I think you're outpacing me in high tie. When did you buy in? So um, I've been in high tie for a few months now. I'm up in it. I'm happy with it. It's pumping for sure. Oh, he's got Vici. Moat. A meta, 40% in meta. That's awesome. CLS up 27%. These are solid gains here. I mean, there's only... If I, if I look... Oh, you just got in Friday and you're up already? And that, that much? That's Wow, that's incredible. It doesn't quite reconcile with the clip I just played. <laughs> the the uh, percentage up doesn't reconcile with that. <laughs> okay, let's see. Eat. What is eat? Uh, it's down 1.77%. You're, you're really not uh, down in much at all. Oh, Brinker International. Oh, is that like the security company? Well, over the last two years, it's up 30%. Since October 3rd, it's up 58%. That's cool. Um, oh, they own Chili's? Hence the name, right? I knew it had something. That's right. The parent company for Chili's, right? Interesting. Invest in what you like, right? That's why I try to invest in, like, you know, Wingstop and, you know, like, Hooters stock and stuff like that. Um, or the parent companies, anyway. Let's see. Uh, TM up 8%. Uh, that's P-O-W-L, I had to really look. APP, 17%, 20%, 17%. Your average cost, your current price, percentage of your portfolio. So most of your portfolio is in Amazon. No, it's not, but it's like, you know, parent companies. I was kind of half making a joke. IIPRs, Wingstop is, though. Microsoft, yeah, high tie. That's phenomenal for just getting in. Oh, is it? A, you know, I haven't been looking. Um, I've been really busy with work this week, but high tie was up to 265. Wow, look at that chart. Since I can jump screens here, I'm actually going to... This is like a parabolic move upward. Watch this. It's like a um, it's like a J-curve. Look at this. Over the last, like, last couple days here. Last 10 days. It's like a J-curve. That's awesome. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Uh, some Google MOD. I like MOD. So if you all wanted a way to... So everybody that loves Tesla, all the Tesla fanboys and fangirls out there, um, obviously Tesla is in the tank. It's been performing horribly. If you all wanted like a better way to actually make money in Tesla, well, invest in a supplier like Modine, which happens to be a supplier of Tesla, which has done phenomenally, as you see in Dissector's portfolio here, up 41%. And if you look further, if you go back like a year, Modine uh, Manufacturing, 57%, uh, just year to date, 57%, um, 366% in one year. What did uh, Music Man say here? I sold all my stocks in February, put everything into Litecoin. I've been hearing a lot about that. Yeah, Litecoin. So who else said that? Um, Jackson, is it Jackson in the Discord was saying that? He did Litecoin and BCHG. Year-to-date gain of 166% at the beginning of the year. So you sold everything and put it all into that. That's awesome. And then you're planning to go back to stocks, dividends, and covered calls after this bull run. You should submit a portfolio for me to review. I'm sure, so that percentage is nice, but it depends, like, how much you had in it. Like, if you had, like, a big, big chunk of money, obviously 166% of that makes it really nice. Anyway, so let's see. I only see uh, Vici is down, uh, CAH is down, and then EAT is down. So there's only three of them, right? There's only three of them that are down. Uh, let's see. DK and G DraftKings, 
that one's up 32 percent GCT GCT Giga Cloud Technology you're up 28 percent in that one let's look at CAH Oh, Cardinal Health. Yeah, this is a good one. We were just talking about this on a live, I think, with Capital Mindset a couple or a week ago or so. Did you get into four, by the way? Oh, you did. There it is right there. I'm in four also. I'm hoping to 5x with four, or at least 4x with four. Oh, here, here is Kale. Let's see. Before you think to invest into any manufacturing, look at their suppliers. Most manufacturers contract out all parts manufacturing. Hog Farmers up 321% on BCHG uh, and 112% on Litecoin. There's just a lot in the top positions, but I like the concentration. Yeah, so your biggest holding is Amazon. Then you've got SMC. Oh, you have it sorted here. So your top four biggest holdings. High Tide is your fifth biggest holding now. So you've got uh, IIPR, Microsoft, High Tide, and Vici all over 6%. And then you've got a little bit of a moat with moat. Okay, uh, Varden is on and says, any growth ETFs? Well, we're covering growth right now. Um, actually, I can pull up the, the ones you've messaged me in a second here. But anyway, so overall, yeah, I like this portfolio. And you've got your, um, did you do the spreadsheet analysis yourself? Or did you use like a program? I see you've got the chart here of total return. So your biggest winners, oh, there's Crocs, 62%. Is that your biggest winner, actually? Yeah. Crocs is your biggest winner. SMCI is your second biggest winner. XLK. Is that, um, that's a subsector of the S&P, right? XLK. Yeah, the technology subsector. Let's check that one out. 29% in two years. Ah, we can do better than that. Like MAG7. Or just a good, like, large cap growth fund. Not a horrible ETF. Roth total 279,000 as of today. That's phenomenal. Shasta, the gamer pet sitter, says, thank you so much for your expertise. Well, I hope I'm showing some. This is kind of just general discussion here for now. But hopefully, if anything, the glasses and the hat make me look like a legit guru. That's what I'm aiming for. Okay, well, really impressive dissector. Uh, honestly, the grade, uh, I'd say, you know, solid, solid A. Um, doesn't really change from before. I see you've added to it. So we'll have to, you know, do like a once a month, do portfolio reviews for everybody that submits them. Let's see. Taxable plus my, plus my Roth had a typo. Yeah, because I saw you said Toth. I was like, what is that? <laughs> okay, he wants to look at AIR. A-I-R-R. So he's secretly, uh, Mr. Varden here is secretly a huge Yield Max fan. He's just wanting me to cover growth just to change things up. Yeah, a lot, uh, lot of exposure to the green substance, huh? I would say it, but the first video I did on the on 420, uh, I like to see Hog Farmer. See, you're winning Hog Farmer over. He says, Dissecta, not an idiot. <laughs> um, so what I was going to say, oh, when I first like monetized on here, uh, on 420, I did a video on the green substance and the video was not monetizable because I talked solely about the green substance so I try to be careful yep I knew I called it yield max fan right okay first trust RBA American Industrial Renaissance TM ETF up 42 percent for a year uh, 13 percent year to date uh, 58 percent 58% uh, over the last three years. Let's look at, let me take these silly things off. Made more sense on April Fool's Day, right? All right, so let's look at, uh, let's see here, summary. The quants have it a buy, SA has it a hold. A plus for momentum, D for expenses, D and D for dividends and risk, B for liquidity. Uh, let's see. Oh, peers. We can look at peers. I shares industrials. 
By the way, what's everybody's thoughts on the um, the fees that Fidelity was talking about, like $100 or something? I have some other fund managers I'm talking to, and they were concerned about coming on because they thought that was like all we wanted to talk about or something, but I had to say no, but it is a, it is a hot button issue for sure. FIDU, Fidelity, MSCI, Industrials Index. Let's see. Uh, one of these is way down, SIJ. Oh, pro shares, pro shares. So we're talking about the direction funds. The direction funds, I may get them on. That's the competitor to pro shares. It's ultra short. Oh, that's because everything's going up. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, that's an ETF, so no statements to look at with that one. Oh, I see, you used uh, sheets. That's cool. The only thing I miss about StreamYard uh, compared to this is that I can like highlight comments or put comments up. Okay, let's see what, we, what else we had in the Discord. So we got our portfolio reviews here. Uh, the other person didn't join in, must still be working. So we also have uh, option trades here. If you guys want to learn option trades, we've got some very advanced people in the Discord. I've got to post some of my trades. I'm behind on that. Uh, we have really fun discussion here with people that are banned from other discords. Um, really fun stuff. As far as the wheel strategy, as far as you know, actual you know value add. Uh, people are posting their trades, where they're making amazing premiums every week. Here was from April first. Climb the ladder. Three thousand dollars in premiums. So I will say I did this one today, this Clean Spark one. I did it Monday. I got burned on it today, though. Um, I went ahead and rolled it out for a loss because I didn't actually want to own the stock. I had five contracts of it, and um, yeah, I didn't want to own the stock. I also looked at the Trump Media one, uh, but by the day I looked at, it, I think I looked at this Tuesday, and the premium was already lower. Marathon Digital Holdings I've already done. Um, probably could have done it this week. I did upgrade. My, I did upgrade my options level approval. What's this in the comments here? So anyway, before I get off of this, three thousand two hundred dollars if you round up. That's pretty good for a week. Okay, Shasta says BlackRock Life Path Index twenty forty five fund institutional shares. So those of you that have followed me for a long time know I'm not a fan of target date funds in the four hundred one k. The target date funds always underperform. My 401k, I got out of all the target date funds like when I first started investing. Like literally right as I got hired and started it, I could tell they were, I, I don't want to say they're crap. There was actually like one or two years that they outperformed everything else. I want to say 2022 was one year that they outperformed everything else. Well, the stable value fund would have outperformed everything else in that year too. So, yeah, target dates, I'm not a fan of. My 401k, I do large cap, I do small caps, I do a lot of S&P. So the large cap fund is like half of my account. It's a big, fat one. I've got a lot of money in the large cap one, large cap growth, because I'm a majority growth and index investor. Um, I have like half of my 401k, my first 401k, by the way, that's like the big one. That's about to hit a key milestone that I might do a video on. Um, that one, half of it's in large cap. Um, S&P, probably another 25% of it is in S&P. And then I've got small, some small cap um, company stock for the company that it was with. And then, um, so there's like four funds that I'm in. I used to be in five, but I'm in four of them. I don't do any like mid cap. When did your portfolio start to really compound? Oh, good question. Um, let me see if I can. I did. I did a video on it. Um, so it starts to snowball. I would say when you get over six figures. I don't know if you're there yet or not, but when you get over six figures, um, if you start to do like if the market does thirty-five percent in a year, you think about this: thirty-five percent on a hundred thousand. That's another thirty-five grand in a year. So like if you're working a job or whatever, you make like median income or whatever, that 35000 that's like having a second job. So my 401k last year actually made what used to be a full-time salary for me. Um, and Varden agrees with me. 
over a hundred thousand. Yeah, that's that's when it starts to snowball. So, I was pretty confident in that answer. But of course, uh, if I'm ever in doubt, thankfully I happen to be in possession of advanced financial forecasting equipment, also known as the eight ball, that can always confirm. So, is a hundred thousand dollars? It says better not tell you no. And of course, if we get an answer we don't like, we can always just shake it till we get the answer we want, right? Most likely. Yeah, so yeah, 100,000. Um, and then when it gets to like 200 or 300, it just really starts to snowball. Um, so like this year, if the market does say, like if, if, if the account does like 40%, you're talking big money. So I could be to the point of retirement within the next year or two if I want to. Um, it all depends how this thing, this YouTube thing goes. Um, and I mean, I like working too. It's it's one of those things that's like, like uh, working from home, I'm less productive than I am being in an office. You know, I go, in, I'm on a hybrid schedule, so I go into the office like twice a week now. Um, but there's something to be said about working. Um, it, it would be an adjustment. And I, I feel like there would be a lot of, because I'm not great at managing my time. So even though I could retire foreseeably in the next two to three years, I don't want to necessarily give up my work. You know, I got all this education to, you know, to get the job that I have and stuff. And I, it would, it would feel kind of stupid to just walk away from it. But who knows if this channel takes off, um, then, you know, it could be a game changer. I was actually looking over, this is going to be a side rant, but I was looking over, um, there's a website called socialblade.com where you can look at you can look at any YouTube channel. And so the big channels that got in early on, like the Graham Steffens, the Meet Kevins, those guys, they're crushing it. They do anywhere from like a million to five million a year in ad revenue. And I feel like newer channels, it's harder to ever get to that point. Like if you want to feel a little bit, not, not to discourage myself or anybody, but basically those channels, it's pretty mind boggling because like the views that I have on my channel over the life of the channel which I'm approaching like half a mil right now in terms of views, these channels get that in one day. One day. So that's really puts things in perspectives. Let's see, Shasta, it would be helpful to others. Keep up the great work. Here is idea for content and for laughs. Have you seen that Kumer guy, latest portfolio? No, who is, uh, I've never, who's Kumer? I've never, I'm just kidding. This is funny. Some of you that are on here, you'll like this comment. Uh, have you seen the, his latest portfolio? It's a train wreck. Mind you, that was before the pullback today. Varden says, how so? Graham Stephan is unlikable. Yeah, he's kind of uh, he's kind of douchey, I guess you could say. He's like all business. I, I, I've watched him. Um, he's like very serious. He's like all business. And he's so cheap, which is so funny. Like he's talked about like going on a date and stuff. And like, or no, he talked about like splitting a pop tart with his girlfriend on one of his videos that cracked me up. Cause I thought I was cheap, but I was like, damn, there are cheap. There are people out there that are way worse than me. And I've gotten better over time, but yeah. Um, some of these people just have an insane work ethic, but I will say there was also a first mover advantage when it came to YouTubing because the amount of like, the effort that I put in, like, I would say, like, I work harder for YouTube. It's, it's, it's not hard. Like, I'm putting videos out, but trying to be on schedule and all that, pumping out at least two a day and all that, like, to keep, to stay relevant in the algorithm, uh, it's a lot of work, you know, and the compensation for the work has not quite caught up to it yet. What's this here? I got an emoji from the Gamer Pet Sitter. Oh, the Gamer Pet Sitter. Oh, is that another channel? So I want to do another video just talking about YouTube and stuff like that. I haven't done like an ad revenue one in years, not years, but like I've been monetized for, I actually haven't even been monetized for two years, but I used to do like ad revenue uh, updates. So the ad revenue was really juicy for a lot of channels in like 2020 and 2021 when the ones like, you know, Meet Kevin blew up when he was covering like stimulus checks and stuff like that. Um, the ad revenue actually went down uh, in terms of like CPM for finance channels uh, over the last couple of years, but it seems like it's starting to come back a little bit. Anyway, so where was I going with that? Let me see if I can pull up. See, I don't want to just pull this up because 
this screen literally shows everything. So if I pull up something that I don't want you all to see, then you know that could be that could be trouble. Let me see if I just pull up like a blank Excel. I did a video on 401k, but I don't know. With all of you watching me, I don't know if I want to do this right now. Anyway, I will say that account that is, you know, the bulk of my investment net worth is, um, nope, don't want to do that. Um, the bulk of my investment net worth is kicking butt, I'll say. Um, and eventually I'll put those statements in the Discord. Well, I'll, I'll put screenshots in the Discord, rather. Okay. Let me look at, uh, oh, we got 47 of you on just listening to me ramble here. Okay, I know I'm kind of all over the place here. As far as, like, the yield max, let me see something here. Where did Ryan Dingler go? He got quiet. He must have left. Um, anyway, yeah, lots of drama in the YouTube space with all these other, other channels and stuff. I notice, no offense to anybody, but there's a lot of, like, I guess middle-aged men that have the, their channels and it's like there's other discords where they're just posting all their videos and stuff and it's like man everybody's chasing views what is this Robin Hood oh Ramble On is a great song oh yeah Robin Hood is it a long term or short term what kind of music do I like oh good question um, I like a lot of stuff so I like um, I like rock I like some R&B, I like some, some pop music, I like, um, you know, 80s and 90s music, I like some classical music, I've got kind of an eclectic taste in music, uh, I like some of the newer stuff too, um, yeah, I, my, my music tastes are kind of, kind of all over the place, but yeah, I like rock, you know, classic rock, stuff like that, RDVY ETF, check it out. Uh, he's trying to keep me focused on the growth here. Okay. You know what I find funny? I guess I'll show you guys this here, a little, little backstage. I always say I have an eclectic taste. Yeah, well, eclectic tastes are good to have. Um, I guess my investment style is... What's this, Yaz? That was a band name, wasn't it? That's funny. All right, you all... I'll give you all a little backstage tour here after we get rid of angry Bill O'Reilly here. I try to make that the, the channel intro. Uh, what I found interesting is I did two videos this week that, oops, well that's a real backstage tour there. That's okay. Uh, let me go to content here. EDM, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get back to regularly, regularly scheduled programming in just a second here. So here's what I find funny. On, let's see, April 2nd, I covered, and I used the same thumbnail, I said, how to earn 15000 in dividends with a growth stock. And the growth stock was NVIDIA. And the example was NVIDIA that if you bought it like a year ago and you sold it now and you had a long-term capital gains tax rate, you could divide that number and the proceeds and you would have 15000 a month. What I find hilarious is that even though I'm talking about literally the same concept, same thumbnail, it underperforms the dividend video that I did earlier in the day. I guess not by much, because it was like half of the, it was still like half of the views, but I did get some thumbs down though, whereas this one didn't. Oh, I shouldn't show this, I'll encourage more people to thumb down. It's funny, even like the, the least controversial topic, it'll get a lot of times at least like one thumb down. So there's definitely one hater out there. Wonder who the hater could be. Let's see, you should listen to Hump by Buried Alive. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, write that one down. High yield is an emotional appeal. Okay, so let me go on a rant about that. So dividends, all right. So dividends, here comes the thumbs down. Uh, dividends are not free money, but I, I'm actually reassessing, and in this, in this YouTube journey and talking to all of you all, I'm reassessing my own, um, I need a new thumbnail guy. Well, I just found a volunteer here. Why don't you be my thumbnail guy, uh, Varden? You can intern for me for free. You know, it's funny. So one of my interviews with Jay, someone asked like, hey, can you, do you need like an intern? And I was like, wow, someone joins my live stream and asks Jay for an internship. I'm like, no, how about intern for the coach? Get, you know, it, it, you'll be a free intern, but it's, it looks great on a resume. Inter, intern for a financial YouTuber. 
you get experience, you get industry experience because you're interning for a financial YouTuber, right? Mm -hmm. Make my thumbnails and stuff like that. It looks great on a resume, wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. And I'm just joking with you, Varden, but believe it or not, another subscriber was the thumbnail artist, so you might know who it is. I know I'm reusing a lot of them. I'm working on... Uh, you can probably tell which ones I did myself. Like the fund manager ones, like this one. Okay, I did this one myself, but I used a, I used the same template that I uh, that I had before. So yeah, I know it's all a, a time a time commitment thing. So anyway, oh back to high yield. So here's the thing with high yield, um, and I'm reassessing this myself. Um, it is emotional. You're right. It's the psychology of investing. It's that you think like, oh, they're doing it for me. I'd just rather them do it for me. Well, no, like you could get a better return in growth stocks and then just sell whenever you need money. Just sell. But the concept of a dividend, thinking about it, and I'm not complaining, like dividends have helped me grow an audience on here, but it is an emotional appeal and there's so many like look how many dividend channels there are on YouTube and, and like I said I've really been doing a lot of thinking about it because I'm thinking because I liked the concept of dividends myself at least I would say for like almost 10 years I've liked the concept of dividends and and the moment that I got dividends when I got my first stocks like I got you know I had some Disney stock I had some well, you've seen it, all the all the early stocks that I got into. Let me see if I can pull uh, this up over here. Speaking of that, uh, let me see. I like spreadsheets. You know, I wanna I wanted to try to show something on here. Uh, let's see, this is something outdated here. I don't know if I should be pulling this up or not. Uh, nope, I don't want to show that. Maybe this tab. Oh, this was actually some of the early stocks I got into here. Um, I actually got into, I was in Twitter before. Elon Musk got me out of that one. Cisco. Okay, so Cisco was like one of the best stocks I was ever in. So Cisco, I like 3 x in Cisco. So I was in like Starbucks, you know, Delta Airlines, Oracle, Disney, Walmart, CVS, T. Rowe Price, uh, Eastman Chemicals, Gilead, uh, some Sea World actually, some of those were some of the first ones I was in. Um, so moral of the story, let me close this out. <clears throat> moral of the story, uh, I was fascinated when I got my first dividends, and I thought, wow, if I could, when I started getting like three hundred a month just on those stocks, I was like, wow, I could do this, and I would do the math in my head. I'd be like, all right, if I have a portfolio of a hundred thousand dollars. And if I invest it all, like at the time AT&T was paying like 7%, you know, you divide by 0.07, and you're like, oh man, I would need almost 1.5 million in AT&T to get uh, a full-time income. That's something that, how can I say this without insulting anyone? Um, it, it's, it's, it's like a, it's not a fantasy, but it's like a, um, you know, it, it, it really, it gets people excited that, wow, I can earn a full-time income on dividends. But the thing is, I look at AT&T stock. It used to be stable, but it turned out to be total crap. So I agree. You know, growth, you're better off in the growth. And I even said to myself, all right, you know, this 10% of my portfolio, which is a lot of my brokerage account, doing these yield max funds, all right, I can do an experiment. Well, looking back, I wish I wouldn't have gone into Tesla and stuff like that or Clip even though it's like, yeah, I've got the 401k that's kicking butt, that's far offset whatever losses I have in yield max over here, I would much rather have just gotten into like NVIDIA or something like that. Let's see here. LOL, more flames. Oh, like the fire symbol? Like it's fire? I love dividends, but anytime I rationally think about my portfolio, the less I care, total return is king. Well, that's where I'm getting myself. Obviously, it's a bit of a conundrum you know, from a content creator standpoint, because it's like, all right, you know, where do I go? I can start covering, like, Vici or, like, Starbucks or, what, MPW or some of those, but those don't get the buzz like these, these high-income ETFs do. But, you know, I do add in growth, too. 
Let's see what Music Man says here. When I diversify... Oh, what do you think about my taste in music, by the way, Music Man? What, what type of music uh, do you like the most? When I diversify after the bull run, I plan to do a mix across the board, different dividend funds from low yield growth up to higher yield without much growth. Oh, see, Varden knows I have ADD. He's trying to keep me on task here. Um, let me read that comment again. Diversify after the bull run. Plan to do a mix across the board of different dividend funds from low yield growth to higher yield without much growth. The thing is, though, th this is my thing. Okay, so I'm not complaining, right? If you look at NVDY, 120% return is phenomenal, right? Over the life of the fund, like it's it's phenomenal, obviously. Oh, that's I'm looking at price return. I want to look at total return. Door Gunner is on. Bought Ymax and Ulti with my Defiance distributions today. Oh, nice. I didn't do anything with my dividends yet. I might buy some growth stock with it. I'm still waiting for either a split or a pullback in Nvidia. Ooh, that reminds me, Chipotle. Chipotle was splitting. Chipotle. Now, this one is going to get to 3000 I think it already brushed brushed close to it. A $10,000 investment in BCHG last March would be worth... Oh, my God. You're going to give me major FOMO. I know it's a 50 for 1 split, uh, but when is it happening? They give it an F for valuation. The quants have it as a hold. Wall Street has it as a buy. The SA analysts have it as a hold. Um... Five hundred thousand. See, that's the thing because it's like what I'm saying about Tesla. Okay, so your ten thousand in Tesla that's like worth five thousand now, if that. Oh my God, five hundred thousand, just like Nvidia. Rob Smith says keep a nice mixture. Hey, Rob Smith, are you still bullish on Tesla? What are you thinking? You were like a huge cheerleader for Tesla over the last year. What What are you thinking on it? Oh, he retracted his message. Why? I was reading it. Oh, man. Um, interesting. I'm up 70000 on my BCHG and Litecoin. Let's look at those after we're done looking at Chipotle. Let's get some more FOMO here. Check this out over 10 years. Nice growth stock, right? 441%. Maximum, 6,727%. Wow, so if I just like put everything into Chipotle forever, <laughs> look at that. Phenomenal. Let's look at their financials for a second. Let me see something here. I used to be a huge uh, Lincoln Park fan, by the way. I was just, I don't know why I thought of that. Random, I know. But, um, yeah. And then who was it? Um, Mike Shinoda, one of the guys from there, he did his own stuff. There's a song I really like. It's like my, it could be my theme song. Crazy Chipotle got that high, right? You know what's funny? I'm not going to lie. Like, I do some shameless things to be cheap. So, <laughs> I have no problem going into a place and just ordering, like, the kid's meal. Because um, it's a pretty good portion. So, like, Chipotle, you can get... And this is the way I stumbled on the I, I the way I stumbled onto this. I like I like quesadillas, right? So I go in there, and the staff says, "Oh, you got to order online, a quesadilla, unless you're ordering a kid's quesadilla." And the wheels turned in the coach's brain, and I said, "Oh, just give me the kid's meal then." And so I watched. And I'm like, "Dang, that's a pretty good portion, and you get three sides, and a drink, and chips." And so, like, I'm not going to lie, I have no problem doing that. Now, some places, they'll give you shit about that. But, um, you know, it, it's pretty good. Like, I mean, you get you get a decent portion, you get three sides and a drink, and it's like five bucks. I like it. And I still act immature enough anyway. So, heck yeah, BS, right? Like all kinds of music, just not opera. I do like, now that we're going to get into music, there's like that rendition of the Phantom of the Opera. It's in, if you ever watch the movie, um, The Big Short, it's, um, 
that rendition of the Phantom of the Opera on the organ, it's in there when they go, when they cut to Vegas in that movie, and that, the organ, like, that's awesome. Like, if I'm going to, like, nerd out on music, I have a big screen TV right behind me. I have a sound bar. Like, I'll just play that and, like, blast it. I like doing karaoke, too. Karaoke's growing on me. Thoughts on Scooby-Doo. Oh, man. You know, Scooby-Doo was one of my favorite cartoons growing up. And it's funny, because, like, the other kids would say, oh, it's it's dumb. Like, he, it's it's the same plot line. They just, you know, solve a, a mystery over... They always catch the ghost or whatever. But, no, that was one of my favorites. Um, especially, like, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Like, the 1969 one. Um, and, like, the ones in the 70s. So what's really cool, on HBO Max, they have all those old cartoons that were made by Hanna-Barbera. Um... Sorry, Varden, we're talking, we're talking shows now. Growth stocks will have to wait. <laughs> so those, uh, those cartoons, like 60s, 70s, like those were amazing, well done, you know? Um, so yeah, that was definitely, definitely one of my favorites. And then, um, yeah, a lot of those on there. That's, that's one of the things I like, actually, about having, uh, well, they don't call it HBO anymore. They just call it Max. But they've got all that stuff on there. Um, okay, I guess we'll look at RDVY. I do like also how the, the characters are like the, the archetypes. Like you've got uh, like Fred's the jock, Shaggy's like kind of like the stoner guy, the, the stoner with munchies, Velma's like the nerd, Daphne's like the cheerleader, and then, you know, Scooby Doo is the dog, of course. I miss the old cartoons, Thundercats, Transformers, G.I. Joe, Smurfs, Scooby-Doo, Looney Tunes. I like Looney Tunes a lot, too. Uh, those those are funny. Um, yeah, those cartoons. I like some newer stuff, too. Like I like Family Guy, uh, some like South Park. Um, I like good humor. Uh, good, like, because a lot of stuff, you know, like SNL and all that, like a lot of stuff has gotten, I don't know, what would the term be? Like, I don't know, woke or whatever. Like, Stuff's like kind of like not as funny as it used to be, but like there was a time like SNL was like really funny. Family Guy is still funny, but like Seth MacFarlane used to really like not hold back at all. Quarterly dividend of 0.22, no thanks. Well, this is growth though. I'm I'm presuming uh, this is First Trust Rising Dividend Achievers. Rising Dividend Achievers. That sounds like an award. <laughs> That sounds like a, an award that Kumar or somebody would give. Like, these are my rising dividend achievers. It sounds so corny. It's for long term. Yeah, so the quants have it as a buy. The SA analysts have it as a buy. Is this fun to buy? We'll know in a second. Yes. The advanced equipment says yes, it is. Okay. So what do I see? Over 10 years, 176%. Um, over the life of it. Oh, it's like 10 years old, basically. So that looks good. But the thing is, like with a lot of these ETFs, like look at a really good one. You really want to crush it? Look at Upro. Watch this. I want to get these guys on, too. So Upro, look at that. Okay, they've been around since like 2010. Over the last 10 years, 811%. SCHD, I don't, can someone explain to me the appeal of SCHD? It, it's all right, but it's got such a low dividend and stuff like that, and it's relatively flat. Like, what's the point? There's so many funds that can compete with your money. Just go into, like, a 3x levered S&P fund. Go into, like, the TQQQ. Quant, look at this. Quants have it a strong buy. SA analysts have it as a buy. All right, TQQQ. Watch this one. Ready for this? 13,000, almost 14,000%. How's that for a rate of return? It's not dividends. It's not yield max. It's not defiance. It's not um, rec shares. It's not round hill. Oh, you all want to see something funny? So for some reason, I'm not sure why, but rec shares is the only funds that I haven't been able to get on or have them respond to me. Oh, this guy sent me a new message, by the way. Um, well, here's what, long story short, anyway, here's what I did today. I get these, um, I get these, these canned emails from Rec Shares. This is this guy, Scott McKenna. Oh, holy shit. Wow, my story just backfired on me. He did respond to me. Holy shit. I didn't even see that. All right. 
I retract my story. Rex shares are part of the cult. I wondered, I wondered, I said, is that why? Because uh, a certain someone was there ringing the bell. Um, I wondered, I said, oh, maybe I'm, <laughs> maybe Coach is blacklisted. Look at SCHD dividend growth. SCHD is more defensive, has way more dividend upside than SPY. Rec yeah, SCHD or VIG. Okay, so Varden, part of your uh, end of the agreement is that you have to come on the Discord live, which means I think you have to rejoin in the Discord since I'm covering your funds. Anyway, wow, I didn't think that would be that easy for that. Because I've reached out to him before. Like, I've sent, like, two or three emails. Anyway. Oh, Dissector likes you. He says you're a dog. A low-key dog. Not like the character Loki. Uh, okay, well, wow, that just kind of like blew me away. I didn't expect to go in and start telling a story, and then the guy responded to me. That's cool. My day is complete. Okay, um... Oh, SCHD. And then VIG. VIG. SCH. SCHG. Schwab. The Curve people are awesome. Okay, let me say, like, my whole impression from start to finish dealing with them, from the time I reached out to them to the time that, like, their person responded to me, uh, I would say their company culture seems to be phenomenal. Uh, they seem like they're on the ball. They're very detailed in their answers. I get a sense they work really hard. They're thorough. Um, and... I was just really thoroughly impressed. Not to say, I mean, I have a good rapport with Jay um, and, and the others. They've all been good. But, I mean, the, these guys were really thorough. Uh, I feel like I feel like they work really hard. Like, I feel comfortable investing with them. Um, it was just, like, really, you know, they, they, were, they were on time. They were on the ball. They were waiting for me, actually. Um, and I just thought that was really cool. And... The guy, Shang, he put me in contact with, like, way more people. And I'm even thinking now, heck, like, I could probably... I'm, I'm, like, actually networking with a lot of these people. Who knows? Maybe I could hit one of them up for a job or something. Some of them... Actually, one of the fun companies is, like, my old company that I used to work at. I won't say which one it was. I'll give you a hint, though. I haven't had them on the channel. It's one of the big four. I had to get out of there, though. I hit a wall. I call it corporate politics and stuff like that. Yeah, Jay's good. He's kind of like a salesman, but he's really a good person to uh, to interview. Don't be scared to smash the like, people. Coach pays $5. Oh, I don't have my... Um, well, you all know I paid a pretty penny for these solid gold glasses. Um, but yeah, I, I have, like, prop money, but it's not in front of me right now. I've obviously moved from the, uh, from the kitchen location. I'm not getting too many people missing that anymore, like I did before. But, yeah, I do have some of that, like, you know, prop money. Yeah, they're definitely genuine. Um, not to say, I mean, Jay is a great interview, too. Esther, Esther CH says, how to compare a cumulative growth versus yearly fund performance? Oh. I typed in the wrong one. SCH. Hold on a second. This is large cap growth. I like large cap growth. So, you all want to hear a funny story, actually? So, one of the companies I used to work at before, um, they pumped garbage mutual funds. So, check this out. So, large cap is great. Large cap's like one of my favorite fund allocations, right? But there are certain mutual funds out there, retail mutual funds, that advisors push onto their clients that are such garbage that while large cap has had such a phenomenal run, some of these are like, way, way, way underperforming. Here's one I want to show you, case in point right here. This fund is hot garbage. It's called, it's a Columbia large cap growth fund. Hot garbage. Down 46. How, ask yourself, how can a large cap fund, I even asked Debt Slave this in his Discord. He was blown away. How can a large cap mutual fund be down 46% over a time that the other funds are up like two or three hundred percent, it's incredible, right? 
Well, their fees are outrageous for one thing, but I mean, these funds, I, I would say steer clear of these. My, what, one, one of my, when I was on the financial advisor track, the company I worked for, they pushed this garbage, these funds. That's why I could never be an advisor. I could never be going the sales route. That's why I decided, you know, more education, computer science, along with my finance degree and some econ, get into a big company, actually use my brain instead of just selling. Is Debt Slave a good guy? I think he's a great guy, actually. Um, he had a few disagreements with some people, but um, if you go on there, like, he, he puts a lot of his time into just helping people out. Like that guy Norberto on there, he calls him Poppy. Um, yeah, he helps him out all the time. I, I found him to be, like, very generous with his time, and, uh, you know, he just gives back with his time. He doesn't even run a channel. He could totally have a channel. I mean, he's very knowledgeable. I actually told him, I said, you should be the one uh, that's a financial YouTuber out of, because uh, he got kicked out of Kumer's Discord. Um, he had that whole thing with, I call him Boogeyman. That's my nickname for him, but uh, Aunt Boogie World. Well, me and him kind of made up, but um, he's a little off the wall sometimes. I, Ryan Dingler just had a back and forth with him too. Um, and uh, it's funny. These things, it's all like a kind of like a rite of passage in the YouTube journey. Uh, <laughs> it's like if you're a dividend channel, you're going to encounter Boogeyman. You know, you're going to encounter all these other people and stuff like that. Um, and then all these other like middle-aged dudes that are running channels and stuff. Anyway, long story short, yeah, Debt Slave is, is good. He's good people. Monopoly Matt, yeah, he's something else. Um, I don't know why, like, from what I understand, I don't, you know, want to attack people personally and stuff like that, so. Oh, this is funny. You know who actually, so he was in my Discord for, like, an hour. I'm going to call this one out because we actually have the person on that brought him into my Discord. Uh, so... I think, I want to say Varden actually brought him on at one point, and I didn't even know who he was. I didn't know he was like the big admin over there in the other one, but he got mad at the idea of buying low and selling high because I dared to say that if Tesla would get back to $18 a share before the reverse split, that I would sell. And I didn't know who this guy was. He came in. I tried to chime in, and he's like, oh, I'm out of here. I'm leaving this Discord. You know, coach is a a jerk or whatever, you know, and I'm like, all right, dude, whatever. Um, so yeah, buy low, sell high. Anyway, that's another tangent, but um, I, I don't know why anyone would... Oh, you don't remember him, Matt? Yeah, Matt's the guy that he, he kind of runs the other Discord. Um, he was in my... Di I thought you brought him in because you guys were having the chat. Anyway, you know another funny story? Um, that Retire on Dividends account... Um, remember you asked, you said, you suggested I should do a live collaboration with him. That was a fake account. I don't know if you remember that or not, but I, I felt bad. I actually, I felt like an asshole because I called him out and it wasn't even him. And yeah, it was totally a fake account. I've got to kick that account out of my discord, by the way, because it's a fake one. Um, I don't know why there's so many fake accounts out there, but literally that's why he said, he, he was like, how much are you paying me? And that's what I got pissed off about. Because I'm like, I would never pay for a collab. But it wasn't even him. And anyway, it, it kind of caused a, a misunderstanding and stuff. But I had no idea it was a fake account. I guess I almost got scammed. But anyway, good thing it didn't happen, huh? All right, where are we? Well, 52 of you on. Um. Okay. SCHG, I want to add SCHD. Let me get rid of this hot trash here. SCHD. Well, no, they're all like copy trades people. They're all people that are trying to sell stuff. So back, this was almost a year ago. This was like last July, before we even had the podcast. Uh, so Andre came onto my channel, and we confronted a copy trades person. And it's somebody I encountered on Facebook. And I sent him the message. He started talking to the guy, too. We had the guy on uh, over the phone. The guy didn't even know he was on. And it was so funny because it was like comedy gold. The guy was like an SNL character. He was like, if you ever see Eddie Murphy and what's the movie now? Beverly Hills Cop. He's like, yes, I'm from the island of St. Croix. I'm a psychic. I'm here to steal your fortune, basically. That's how this guy sounded. 
he sounded like that, and he was running like a copy trades kind of a thing, and he literally, it was so fun, I had so much fun with it, and it was funny, like I was trying to not like crack up on it, but it's a video, it's in my video history from like last July, confronting a copy trade scammer, um, but he literally said he had different packages uh, that he could give you better trades to copy if you paid him more money which is like, you know, scam 101. That's like the big biggest sign of a scam is when like somebody literally says, "Oh, I can give you better stock picks if you pay me more money." Maybe it was trading places, I can't remember. That's another good one too. But anyway, that's how the guy sounded. He said he literally sounded like him in that movie. He's like, "Yeah, see, I'm from the island of St. Croix. I'm here to steal your fortune." Kind of like that, like a little bit of a islands accent or something like that. But anyway, and then the guy still messages me on Facebook, too, which is funny. Okay, so where are we now? I can't believe none of you joined the, the chat here. I gotta do it more often. Oh, Gators Rock, he's laughing at the story. You might have been there for that. Uh, you've been subscribed to me for a while. You, you might have actually been there for that, I can't remember. But it was fun. It was fun for sure, because I kept trying to get these people on. Another funny story about the copy trades, I have so many of these people, uh, they reach out and like they, they usually come on Facebook and they wanna they wanna sell they get they get like a finder's fee, they get like a commission for um, getting you to join the copy trades program. So this one lady like has just been desperate to recruit people and so she's been messaging me for almost a year. And finally, I said, all right, how much do you make off of me? Like, if I if I do this copy trades program, she's like 5%. And I'm not kidding. I literally said this. I said, okay, so if I invest $100, you would make $5, right? Okay, so if I just send you $5, will that make you go away? That's what I told her. <laughs> and needless to say, she didn't react uh, too well to that. She's like, no, no, that's not the point at all. She's still like... It's a, it's a great program and this and that. So, some of these people, I honestly just think it's like either a mental disorder or a psychosis or something. They just, they have to sell, sell, sell. I don't know. It's kind of like some channels just posting all the time, like five times a day for the views. It becomes like a psychosis. I can relate. I will say like the YouTubing, I don't want to call it toxic, but there's days like I enjoy it. But it's gotten to where over the last couple months, it feels like work a little bit because it feels like just staying on schedule, you know, pumping out more than one video a day. It's a lot. Even though it's not hard, it's a lot. And staying on that, it's like, man, I just want to, like, just go away for a week. But you don't want to because then it's like, oh, you're going to lose ground. You think about this and that. So, you know, it's a lot. I can see why some people say that it's, it's toxic. But nonetheless... Okay, what do we have here? Grow food yourself. He's got his trades in here. And let's see. Oh, I can answer this. He asks what he does for a living. He climbs a ladder, literally. There we go. <clears throat> okay, so we had some interesting, in the general chat, we had some interesting, oh, well, someone else just joined. We had an interesting chat in the, uh, Oh, speaking of Looney Tunes, we've got Pepe Le Pew on. I think he spelled it a little bit wrong. Uh, we had a lot of interesting back and forth here in the general chat. Anyway, where was I, by the way? I was looking at, let's see, SCHD. SCHD. Let me put in SCHG. SCHG, too. Oh, you did sell. So you're completely... Well, I was going to say I didn't see any yield max in the portfolio. I was going to say, dissect the... What are you doing on high yield dividend channel? You have no high yield dividend. <laughs> no. Well, you know, I mean, the bulk of the audience is dividend, dividend people. So I had one live stream like a week ago. I had like six people tell me that they sold out of their uh, Tesla... I was like, wow, it must be selling day today. So check this out. I have some polls in here. Uh, this poll, take the poll if you haven't already. Uh, have you sold out of 
Tesla is the poll. This became like uh, people sharing their portfolios or their trades or something. Dang, where'd the, where'd the darn poll go now? There's a lot of activity it's been in here. What is that? Tesla. Um, yeah, this was supposed to be... Here you go. So you can vote on it. See, like... Oh, I'm sorry. This was next Tesla reverse split. Let me go. Where was the most recent? Here we go. Already sold out. 13 of you said you already sold. Will sell soon. Uh, I voted for that myself. Never owned it. Five of you. Got more Coney. All in growth nearly, but it doesn't make sense to me. Only ones I consider AMZP or NFLP. Oh, for a curve. Not yield max, but like the curve ones. Druz Hill says, I sold all my Tesla for cap loss and moved to YMAX, Ulti, and YMAG. I bought 800 shares of Tesla back at 13 bucks. That's similar to what I did, too. Sold at 16 Well, I didn't do that part. I wish I did part two. I did part one, but not part two. I could have sold it at 18 at one point. Oh, Hog Farmer sold all of his, too. Interesting. Okay. Curve is quality. Yield Max is the popular trash. I, I will say, the phenomenon with Yield Max is like nothing I've ever seen on YouTube. So, before Yield Max came along, and, and, and the neat thing about Yield Max, I, I have to appreciate Yield Max because Yield Max has actually it's put me in contact with a lot of you. A lot of you all that are subscribed to me. You We wouldn't have found each other if it wasn't for Yield Max. So, Yieldmax has done some positives because I'll tell you before Yieldmax ever came along, like I was a nobody channel. I'm still not a huge channel, but like that, the dividend stuff, and that is like the only thing that ever like grew my channel. But yeah, I agree. Curve is quality. Both strategies not great long term though. Although I'd like to do covered calls on something, hedge Yieldmax might make might make twenty five percent. Yeah, hedge it. I did ask. Um, Howard that, by the way, he said, he had a good answer. He had good answers to everything, but I said, what do you think about selling protective puts? He said, well, not, I'm sorry, not selling, buying. He said, well, if you buy it, it's going to impact your income that you get, which I get that, you know, it would impact the income. And he also said that these strategies they're using in these, uh, these high yield dividend funds were reserved like for the ultra wealthy back in like the eighties and the nineties. But the difference I see I'm looking at that as like option strategies. They weren't like selling funds just exclusively to these high net worth clients. Uh, it was actually option strategy. So the difference is like, yeah, the option strategies are great, but why the middleman? Like why the fund? Like we could just either do it ourselves or, you know, I guess in the term, in the case of the high net worth clients, they were having someone do it for them. But yeah, I 100% agree with, um, with hedging. Great community, be back. Awesome, yeah, did you just find us? That's cool. Usually I say newest subscriber has to super chat, but that's a joke. <laughs> that is a joke. Uh, let's see here. You know what's funny? We picked up, we've picked up a lot of people from the other Discord. Like we picked up Joanna. Uh, we've got several people that used to be admins over there. Uh, well, Debt Slave was an admin over there, so... I mean, a lot of a lot of the people, who was it too? Uh, Brian, old Brian, he was over there. He's on. He's with us now. So, yeah, we've picked up a lot of people. Um, anyway, all right, you all. Let's see. I've been going for about over an hour. Uh, I intended to do like you know actual portfolios with people joining Discord and stuff, but you know it's fine. We had a good discussion here. Chopped it up in the chat. You should talk to Debt Slave. I, I encourage you to join the voice chat uh, when I invited you there, actually. Um, we have good discussions. I may actually hop on there after I'm done here. I haven't I haven't talked to them in like a week, but he's very knowledgeable. He can break down options trades and stuff. Very knowledgeable, very generous with his time. Um, and I think he was an advisor, too. And he said he retired at like age 35, which is like my goal. So I think that's cool. Um, anyway... All right, you all. Yeah, this was a good one. Like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll be back tomorrow with another video. At least one, maybe two, maybe three. Oh, and and uh, on the podcast channel, we are having uh, the Cashflow Kings on tomorrow. Ryan Dingler and the Fiscal Philosophy Guy. 
So they're going to be on. There should be five of us. And uh, we're going to go live. It should be real. I'm trying to get my co-host to create that so we can promote it. So, all right, you all. Take care. Have a good one. Good night. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.